to watching for a friend where I watch movies and shows because I love them and let you know whether it's worth watching or not. If you're new here, thank you so much for choosing me. I hope you stay till the end of this video and I hope that you enjoy it. And for those of you who are returning, thank you so much for choosing me again. You know I love the support and I hope that you stay till the end of this video and enjoy it as well. Okay, so we are back with a season four review of Insecure episode four. So we're almost halfway through the season and we, I'm really excited to talk about this episode. Now this season, <laughs> we are four episodes in and it has already taken me on an emotional roller coaster ride. So we start out this week with Molly and Andrew and it's really exciting to see them together going strong. Molly seems genuinely happy and um, Andrew seems really excited and happy as well. It seems like they have not seen each other. They're having some issues matching up their schedules and they're supposed to be having a romantic evening, but Molly lets work get in the way. And of course I was like, God, Molly, <laughs> why? <laughs> I just want you to win. <laughs> I really just want her to win. <laughs> but she's not, okay, so anyway. So I'm sure to everyone's frustration, Molly decides to work until almost two in the morning um, and just kind of like leaves Andrew. He ends up falling asleep. He's very understanding um, at first and um, you know, we kind of leave off there. We also see that Molly is working really, really hard to, you know, really build back those relationships with the people at work that she ruined <laughs> last season. So the two women that initially kind of took her under their wing, we see her working on a case with them. They're joking, they're getting along, and they seem to be, you know, they have some banter going on. So we see her, you know, mending these relationships so things are starting to go better at work which is something that she said in episode one she was like I really just need work to get together for work not to be stressful and so she's working really hard to do that um, but again this is something that she's done in the past at the expense of her own self-care at the expense of her own relationship all she sees is getting in the way so I was really happy about it about that I was like okay Molly there's some growth and she thinks about it when one of her co-workers is like yeah my you know ex-husband or I think it was an ex-husband who like wanted me home at a certain time he would never allow me to work late things like this um and so uh we see that it does give Molly pause for a moment and she's like oh I hope I I hope it's okay but she's very confident that Andrew is okay with it so she is going to continue to kind of push herself at work so that gets us all caught up with molly for now we'll return back to her in a little bit now Esau, on the other hand <laughs> is falling completely back into her old ways she had gone she had come so far she had seen so much growth but what was upsetting this week is that condola is ghosting isa and based off of the argument last week, um, obviously she is not happy with Issa. She's probably not happy with Lawrence either. We'll talk about that in just a moment. But she's ghosting Issa, which is extremely unprofessional. And um, when we think about Condola's character development, to me that seems out of character for her. It seems petty and irresponsible and unprofessional, which is something that she seems to hold very high in high regard. So I don't know if there's going to be a good excuse for her to, you know, kind of not show up for Isa right now maybe they'll, she'll have a good reason but all signs point to she's just mad and wants to be petty and wants to leave Isa in the lurch but I was really really disappointed in Condola and I was she just started to win points with me and now we're back at score one so bye Condola <laughs> that's how I feel <laughs> you had one chance and now you lost it and there's no winning it back. You better come back and say like you died and came back at this point because you don't leave people in the lurch like that. Not this late in the game over a dude. Over a dude that you've been dating for a few months. 
and it really did leave Issa in the lurch. There were a couple things that she wasn't able to do or had a harder time doing because you know, she left her in the lurch. Now, these are lessons that Issa needs to learn. She tends to be very codependent on the people around her. She tends to take a more selfish approach or take advantage of people around her um, in her times of need. And that is just, that checks out throughout the entire <laughs> series. She's also, she's always kind of like tried to call people and call in favors at all times. It's just part of her personality. So I think this is good that she has to finish this alone. If you think about season three, uh, she tried to give up on this block party so much, Nathan had to push her. Uh, Molly had to give her a couple of pep talks. And even the late last season when she started meeting with condola even condola had to kind of give her a pep talk and be like this is something that is actually going to happen like this won't be a problem so i think this is something that isa has to do on her own for her character arc she needs to see that like she is a businesswoman rather than just seeing herself as this like creative visionary so i think it's a good thing um i do <laughs> You know, she is going back into her old habits, though, because she's letting things fall by the wayside. Things with her tenants at the apartment building that she manages are, you know, kind of not going well. The water got shut off, I guess, for maintenance or something. And she did not tell the tenants, which would piss me off. I would be so mad. I would be so mad if the landlord shut off my water and didn't tell me. So, you know, she's just like letting all of these things fall by the wayside because she can only, she's hyper focused on this party. So Tiffany and Derek had their baby. <laughs> it's a beautiful baby girl named Simone. Her nursery was bomb. I was like, yes, this is amazing. So if I had any more children, <laughs> I would want a nursery like that. Uh, it was a beautiful nursery, very much Tiffany, and um, it was nice to see the girls back together again. It seems like the baby may be a few weeks old now. Love that they brought to light um, the way uh, black women are treated in hospital uh, during in the hospital during childbirth that they're not really believed. You have to advocate much more for yourselves. So I love how they snuck that in there, that issue that um with how black women are treated uh by staff and it doesn't matter if you are beyonce or serena or tiffany <laughs> from insecure so i love that they brought in that kind of like social justice issue um and in this scene isa molly is saying something about how you know she and andrew um you know, are going really strong or something like that. And she's like, yeah, this is how you build a really strong relationship. And Issa makes a joke and she's just like, okay, Jada, I see you red table talking. The other girls take it as a joke. They laugh it off. Molly takes it very sensitively um, as she has been kind of taking, you know, Issa's jokes really sensitively this entire time that we have been with them for four seasons. They've always been very sarcastic with each other. And now Molly is starting to get really, really, really irked by Issa's comments. Um, and then here we also find that Lawrence is at the house visiting Derek and the baby. And he and Issa take some time to talk. Molly sees it as them, you know, being messy, <laughs> which we're, we're not sure where it's going. Molly sees it as only being messy and she thinks she's going to get wrapped up in their mess yet again. And she's like, how dare Issa say anything to me when she's got this whole issue going on. And she doesn't really know that all Issa really cares about right now is this block party. <laughs> like Lawrence tried to talk to her about personal stuff, which may be that he and Condola broke up. Not sure. Uh, but it seems like that's what he was trying to get at and then but she wouldn't even let him get a word in edgewise She was really like they made small talk and then she went right into how stressed out she was about the party so Molly just saw things from the outside looking in she also saw Lawrence leaving at one point and saw Issa leave right after him and just assume that they were trying to like meet up or something it, the timing looked shady but she definitely took it to the stream extreme and just could have asked but she didn't and here at the house the both Issa and Molly ask Tiffany 
and Kelly separately if they know of any tension between the two of them. Both of them seem to be out of the loop on it. And so these girls really just, they don't, they're so scared of losing their friendship or ruining things. They really need to have a talk. Um, I think they will have a blow up and I think they will talk, but um, I don't think it'll be to the very end of the season at this point. So back to Molly, she is starting to get really comfortable with Andrew, but he does bring up that she isn't prioritizing him and he doesn't know if that's going to be work. He doesn't know if that's going to work for him. <laughs> and I think that that is important because in the past he, they've had issues with him being vulnerable. Molly's also had issues of putting a wall up, but it seems like they had a successful conversation. And then lastly, Issa, you know, the headliner for her block party drops out. It was supposed to be Schoolboy Q. He drops out. She tries to call in favors from every single person and then finally realizes that there is an artist that works with Live Nation, which is where Andrew works. She wants Molly to call in a favor with Andrew and see if they can get this artist. And Molly shuts her down. She says that she's not, you know, after a while, Issa's like expecting her to do it and she shuts her down. And I think this was a really important scene because when Issa was asking Molly, um, Molly was really excited. She was like, oh, we get to, you know, Issa framed it as if they were going to have a conversation, maybe to get everything out in the air. Molly actually was a little vulnerable and was like, things are really stressful. I like, I'm really excited that you want to talk. And Issa ignores everything that Molly's saying and goes right into asking for a favor. I was really annoyed with Issa when she did that. I was very proud of Molly for setting that boundary with Issa. Issa can take advantage of Molly and Molly does like to fix things. Um, and so I think it is showing growth. Um, and this is the first glimmer of hope that I've seen in Molly as far as growth goes for the past two seasons. <laughs> I'm really, really excited to see her being mature and standing up for herself. And I was really happy to see Molly in this episode. I was, I was like, why are they trying to disconnect us from Molly? <laughs> I was not quite sure why they were doing that for the last three episodes. And this episode, we are seeing that Molly is having some growth. She's communicating. She's not putting walls up. She's being vulnerable. Um, and Issa is too hyper-focused on this block party, which is one thing that I wish Molly would recognize. It's like, this isn't the time to talk to Issa. She has a one-track mind right now, so you're not going to get anything out of her at this point, which is why I think later on in the season, after the block party, is when they may rekindle their friendship. The only other thing that was somewhat noteworthy is that we do hear Issa getting a voicemail from Nathan. And I'm not sure how I feel about that. And I'm a little afraid that he may pop up at the block party just because it's public and because he will obviously know the date, time, all of that, and try to, you know, come back into Issa's life. Obviously, just the way drama rolls, they're going to insert Nathan back into this at some point. I just don't know what place he has in Issa's life. So we are, we heard Nathan's voice this week, so we should expect him back in the next two episodes. <laughs> But let me know what you guys think about this week's episode. It was definitely a more low-key episode, especially after last week, which was definitely more exciting, um, a lot more fun. And this week was definitely a little bit more sobering, a little bit more intense. And we are starting to see that development of each of these characters' personalities. So tell me what you think down in the comments. Really excited to hear from you guys and see what predictions you have for the next couple of episodes. Now, um, one other thing that I wanted to say is that I'm almost at 50 subscribers and that makes me really excited because I, I'm just excited that other people are interested in my reviews and the things, my analysis of these films and TV. I really, really want to get to 100 subscribers. So if you aren't subscribed, if you could please click that subscribe button, the notification bell, like and comment, that would be amazing. I really want to build my community up of people who love this show, people who love films and movies. 
and TV series as much as I do. So I would love if we can get me to 100 subscribers. And I know I'm going to hit 50 within the next couple days, I think. Um, but I would love to get to 100 subscribers and keep growing from here. Thank you all so much for staying till the end of this. I'm really excited to see what you guys think. And I'm excited for next week's episode where we get to go to this block party. <laughs> and until then, 